All right, Naomi. Naomi, uh, where are you from? So I am from New York originally. Um, lived in Connecticut also growing up. Went to elementary school in Long Island. That's where my mom's from. And um, yeah, I went to high school in Connecticut. My mom is from Long Island, like I said. My dad is an immigrant from the Philippines. He moved to Nigeria actually as a young kid and then came to Brooklyn um, when he was 10 years old without his parents. How was, so. your, how was your childhood? My childhood, I wouldn't say was bad. Um, my parents got together, had my older brother, four years later had me, and then um, they split shortly after I was born and I lived in different states. That's kind of why I moved all over. Um, but my parents did have a pretty hard childhood, both of them in their own way. So I think they really had this passion in them to be successful. And both of them ended up being very successful. My mom was in corporate finance. My dad was a lawyer and did cybersecurity for some really big companies. Um, Sorry, I'm a little nervous. It's okay. <laughs> Being vulnerable is hard for me. Um, what, what, what career did you follow? What, what, what were you looking to do? So in my eyes, I just wanted to be successful financially. So I was thinking doctor, lawyer, engineer, one of those are like my only options. Um, and so I was always interested in science growing up. So I actually ended up going to the University of Arizona. I studied physiology, which is just <clears throat> a fancy word of saying how the body works. I wanted to be a plastic surgeon. I was super into cosmetics and aesthetics and I get fillers and Botox and all that. I actually need Botox right now. But um, yeah, that was my plan. And I cheered at the U of A too. So that's something kind of different. Yeah, I was a cheerleader there. Um, so I think growing up my childhood just to go back to that really quick. Like my mom would check my homework every night and if my handwriting wasn't up to her standards, she would erase the whole thing and make me start over. So there was kind of a level there of like discipline that helped me in college because I did have a really strict schedule. I had 6 a.m. practice, 8 a.m. lifts. I'd have class all day and study all night and then kind of do it the next day and balanced that. And then I also was in a relationship at the time. so. Very strict schedule, a lot of discipline, but I did graduate with a physiology degree. And what, what did you do after you got out of college? Um, so I graduated during the pandemic, technically. So I never had a graduation. I kind of just ended college. Um, it's kind of a funny story, actually. I was in Las Vegas for the Pac-12 tournament. I was cheering it with the basketball team. And um, so, we found out that the world was like shutting down for two weeks and I'm on spring break at this point. So some of my friends were in Miami, some of my friends were in Mexico and they're all like, oh yeah, like extended spring break, cool. But people went back to see their families and spend time with their families. During this like two week shutdown, I went back to Tucson. So I was just by myself. Um, it turned into months of just being alone in like a 290 foot <laughs> apartment, which um, was pretty crazy. And I had a lot of time to reflect. And I think during that time I realized like, I don't wanna to go to med school. I don't wanna take the MCAT. I don't wanna go into the medical field. With everything going on, it was like kind of scary. Um, and so up until this point, my parents were funding my whole life. They were paying for everything. I lived in a really nice apartment. And at this point they were like, yeah, you need to find a job. <laughs> you need to start paying your own stuff. Um, they didn't just cold turkey cut me off, but they were like, you have this budget to work with. So figure it out. Um, and so at that time, I was applying to any job I could get in Tucson. Tucson's pretty small. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's in Arizona, it's where U of A is. And there weren't a lot of opportunities. I applied to like 50 jobs, got rejected from everything. And I wasn't too proud. Like I applied to like scrub toilets and they were like, no. <laughs> so there was this frustration in me and I was like, I just worked for four hours four years straight, super hard on this degree, and like I can't even get the most basic job. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do at this point. I was very lost. I was kind of like in this depression in Tucson by myself. And on a random Sunday, I get a call from my dad, and he was like, I have an opportunity for you. And I was like, okay. And like I mentioned, my dad was in tech. He was pretty big in the tech world. So he was like, it's in tech. Don't cut me off, just hear me out. 
it's in tech, and it's a good opportunity. This was a sales job. I know I like people. I like talking to people. I'm good at developing relationships. So I was like, okay. And he was like, the one thing is you'd have to move next week. Like, pack your shit and move next week. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. So that was Sunday night at like 5 p.m. He said, I set up interviews for you tomorrow. The first interview was actually the next day at 9 a.m. I had like five more interviews that week. I got my offer letter by Friday and I moved the next week. And that was- Where'd you move to? To Phoenix. Hmm. So it's only two hours north, but I mean, it was pretty like last minute and chaotic. So just that move alone was like, I don't know, <laughs> it was a lot for me, but I was ready to get a job and make money. Um, I think I was making like 36K. I'm like, yes, 36K. <laughs> um, so I got that job, started as inside sales, and I just knew ever since I was a kid, I was like different. I don't know what I really mean by that, but I just know I was never meant to like fit into a mold. And so when I got this job in corporate America, I'm like, ah, I feel really inauthentic to myself. Like I took out my nipple piercings, I took off my acrylic nails, I'm like, I have to fit this perfect mold and be the person my parents always wanted me to be. And I made them so proud and they're like, you're making your own money, you are you have your own apartment, I'm so proud of you. Um, so I got really wrapped up in that. And even though I felt this inauthenticity towards myself, I was really good at the job. <laughs> I started as inside sales, I was just making cold calls all day and I was like, this is not gonna get me anywhere. So little old me, youngest on my team, only female, I decided I was gonna go and just meet customers in person because I'm like, I'll have more success this way. And maybe that's me being, I don't know, vain, but I'm like, my looks will get me farther than any of these older men. And it did. Um, before I knew it, I was like the number one rep in the country. <laughs> on my team, um, I was killing it. So they were kind of forced to promote me at that point and I was doing really well in tech. And so even though I was doing really well in tech, I was like, I'm still not making the money that I wanna be making. And I felt without getting super into like details, I wasn't being compensated for not only my efforts, but I wasn't being compensated for my results because I was a top performer on my team and everybody else was making so much more than me. And it always kind of fell back on, well, you don't have the same experience. I'm like, does experience really matter if I'm producing the results? Um, so there's this constant battle of like, oh, I'm just, I don't feel, I don't feel right about this. Like I should be making more money, but I'm not. So that's when I was hanging out with my friends one day and we were all just kind of talking and I was joking about starting an OnlyFans and they were like, you should just do it. You should just go for it. I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. So I got this sales job in 2021. I moved into this apartment in Scottsdale in 2022 in June. What was really funny about it is I had a neighbor that lived kind of like diagonal from me and also our cars were parked across from each other in the parking lot. And he just always had this like really cool vibe to him. His face was tattooed. He was always like decked out in designer, like all like Cartier, bust down, everything. And I'm just like, he just seems really interesting. I'm like, I don't know what he does, but like, I know he's not in corporate America. And at this point I was really unhappy with my job. So I remember telling my best friend, like, I just have to meet him. I don't know what he does, but I just feel like this really big, like urgency to meet him. And she was like, that's kind of weird, but I'm just that kind of person. I have this like sixth sense about me that I don't know, I, I just, it's like a gift. So he was always on the phone, like super urgent, always talking, always like moving fast. And I'm like, I don't ever have the opportunity to really like talk to him. So there was one time we were getting out of our cars that were parked across from each other and he had two luggages in his hands. And I'm like, this is my chance. So I walk up to him, I'm like, I really like your tattoos and I just kind of have to know like what you do. And he was like, oh, thanks. Like wanted nothing to do with me. Um, and so I was like, oh shit, like up until this point is like months of leading up to like, I have to meet him. Like I, I know like we're meant to, to meet each other. 
I'm like, that was really anticlimactic. <laughs> um, but then I kind of saw his demeanor change and he was like, I'm sorry. Like, thank you. Like, I, I appreciate that. And we kind of struck up a conversation. I'm like, okay, so like, I, I need to know what you do for a living. Not to sound weird, but like, I've been seeing you around the apartments. I know we're neighbors. You have a really cool vibe to you. Like, what do you do for a living? And he was like, social media. I'm like, okay, tell me more. <laughs> He's like, I manage girls on OF. I manage girls on Instagram, TikTok, all of that. And my face kind of lit up when he said OnlyFans. And he was like, are you interested in OnlyFans? He's like, because I'm not taking any new clients, but like your face kind of said it all. And I was like, listen, I am not happy in my job. I want a way out. I want a way to make more money and I just don't know where to start. And I was actually joking with my friends like a month ago about how I want to start an OnlyFans. And he was like, if you're serious, let's have a conversation tomorrow. So we went to dinner the next night, talked about kind of like everything, business plans, all of that. And I was like, I'm in, just oh, how do I start? And from then, like, I, what was difficult for me was I was still in tech. And so Naomi's not my legal name. And um, I made sure I had a separate kind of alter ego online because I didn't want to get caught. I didn't want to lose my job. I didn't want to disappoint my parents. They were so proud of me. I was doing so good. Um, and so I was one foot into tech. I was one foot into OnlyFans. And I didn't put the energy and effort into it like I could have. And if, if I would have right off the bat, I know I could have made so much money like right away. But I was too nervous. And I didn't trust myself. And I didn't trust my intuition. And I... If I could go back and change it, I would. But um, yeah, I, I, was, I was living this double life for a long time. And then I almost got to the point where now I was feeling inauthentic to myself because it's like, okay, well, I, I'm like two people in one, like living a real Hannah Montana life, like in real life. And I didn't tell my parents, no one knew, my, my friends knew, but my family didn't know. So when I would go back and visit them, I had to like sneak to the bathroom and like take a picture of my tits. Like it was just, it was, it became a lot. And especially working in tech, it was like a male dominated field. So it was very hard for me to not be nervous for them to find it. I don't know. Like I'm very comfortable in my body. I've always been that way, but it's like the risk of losing my job was really what scared me. So every time I was called into my boss's office, I was just like, oh my God he didn't find my only fans <laughs> like because I know they're all on social media so like I had an Instagram I had all of that um and it's just like one explore page away like I, I was so nervous so yeah I was still in that first job I was promoted to a field rep and I was doing really well and then I got to the point where I was like okay do I really want to be doing tech and only fans because this was like my peak of OnlyFans. I was doing really, really well. January of 2022, I was doing really, really well. Or 2023. January of 2023, I was doing really well. Um, I actually ended up getting offered a better job in tech. And I'm like, yeah, let me triple my income and do OnlyFans. That's a great idea. So I took the job. I was the director of sales operations. I'm like, yeah, more prestige, better title. My parents are happy. I'm happy because I'm making all this extra money. But when I got this new job, it was like a whole bunch of extra, you know, time and effort and energy and learning. It was a learning curve. So I kind of put OnlyFans on the back burner and my numbers plummeted. And like, I was just devastated because I'm like, ah, oh, what am I doing? Because OnlyFans is kind of like a, a daily job, right? It's a full time job. Yes. If you're taking it serious, like you can make really a lot of money. But on you have to be dedicated. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, that's a misconception. A lot of people think like, oh, you just... Put up, take, some put up some pictures and you make a bunch of money if you're pretty like that's not the case a lot of it has to do with you actually interacting with your fans and so that's what was hard is like I was so exhausted from like learning all this new position every day and I didn't have the energy to put into the OnlyFans and like it reflected like crazy um and so what happened was that job the whole company actually dissolved. I got a call from the CEO and he was like, yep, we're shutting down the whole company. Thanks for all that you did. And I'm like, okay, well shit, I have a second income. It's now plummeted. It's at the bottom. And now I just lost this job. I'm like, I have to go full force at OnlyFans now. This is like 
God, you know, I don't know if you believe in God, but this is God telling me like, this is your time. You have to do it. So I had a sit down conversation with my social media manager at this point and I'm like, it's God I'm telling all in. you to show your tits to the world. I'm all in. I'm all in. What do I need to do? <laughs> I can't. I can't go back to corporate America. I'm so over it. Every time I just, I felt like I was getting kicked down. Every, I was down. I was trying to get back out. I'd get kicked down in another way. I couldn't do it anymore. Um, and like I said, I've always felt like I was different. I wasn't meant for that nine to five life of like going into the office. Like, how was your weekend? Like, no. So you're all in now. I'm all in. 100% at this point. Um, it's been... Are you happier? Oh, yeah. My lifestyle. I would say the, the best part about it is the lifestyle. Like, I get to wake up and do whatever it is that I want to do that day, but also make sure I make time to interact with my fans. And what's, what's the worst part of it? I think because of my upbringing, I would say the uncertainty of the money. Because it's not just a fixed salary of what, like, a doctor would have or a tech person would have. Um, it's really like how much effort and energy you put into it is how much money you make. So if you slack on one day, like it reflects in your numbers. That instability freaks me out a little bit, but um, I believe in myself. But and if I, you're dedicated, mm -hmm. you can go all out. And I know it's possible. The girls that I've worked with and I surround myself with are all making crazy money and um, there's no like secret sauce to it, which is really interesting also. It's like every creator is so different of what they're comfortable with and what kind of content content they produce. And um, yeah. Are, are you uncomfortable with some of the content you're putting out there? No, I'm not. I actually make it a point to say like, a lot of people request some things and you know, my page, I like to make it a safe space for everyone to express what they're interested in and put out any requests, but I don't do everything that's asked of me. And there's certain things for no amount of money that I will do. How does it make you feel to be interacting with guys like this? Because you, you, you reply to your own comments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I've actually been able to... I don't want to say like relationship and like romantic relationship type of way, but I have built certain, I guess, relationship dynamics with certain fans that I just interact with more than others or the ones that have been around since the beginning. I think that's the beauty of someone like me versus someone with thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers is like I really do have more of the time to like interact and get to know them. So... Um, just the ones that like, I know what they do for a living. They know where I came from. A lot of my subs actually like are in the tech world. So we have something in common that we can talk about. I'm like, how was your day? You know, like, and, um, we do talk about it and we have something to, uh, relate to each other about, but I wouldn't say that's the case for everybody. A lot of people just subscribe and buy their videos and never want to talk to me, which is totally cool. Like, but I, I do enjoy, um, are, are, are you are you basically a, a porn actress? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. But but you're in control. I am. I think that's the beauty of OnlyFans and the platform is like you can really make the content that you want and that you're comfortable with, and you don't have you're not forced um, to make anything that you're not like in maybe mainstream porn or kind of pressured to do things that you're not comfortable with. And so you're on camera by yourself or with partners or. Both. Mm -hmm. Both? Mm -hmm. and how, how do your parents feel about this? So the way I told my parents, actually, um, I feel horrible to it about it to this day. I forgot my stepdad's birthday, and my family is very close. So they called me, and they were like, you didn't call us. Like, are you alive? Are you okay? And immediately like I looked down at my phone and I looked at the date and I was like I started sobbing immediately um so I've never fucked up like that before like up until this point I had been very like calculated on okay I need to keep this a secret so I need to be like on my p's and q's um and that was the point where I was just like I think we need to have like a family talk right now so I kind of just like was like can everyone just come together on the phone and that's how I told them um how did that go they are supportive. 
they weren't necessarily like thrilled about it, um, but they are supportive of my decisions. And at the end of the day, I think as long as I'm safe, they just want me to be safe and they love me so much. And I, I couldn't have had it really go any better than it did. I know a lot of girls don't have that same experience, but they don't ask questions, um, definitely don't ask specifics. I don't think they want to know, and I don't really want to talk to them about specifics of what I do. But um, I just let them know that I am safe and I am not being forced to do anything that I'm not comfortable with. Mm. Would they like me to be in tech probably more than what I'm doing right now? Yeah. But I think what I'm doing right now is more authentic to who I am. Just ever since I was a kid, I think I've always been kind of hypersexual and I don't necessarily think in a bad way. I just have always kind of used it to my advantage. So I think I think women are getting freer yeah. to express their sexuality, and I think OnlyFans is a vehicle to to do that. Mm -hmm. it, it, the morality of it all becomes a big issue. I'm sure you'll see things in the comments on this video saying absolutely saying, "Oh my God, you're ruining your life." And you're I see a ton of comments like that on a daily basis, and even people saying like, "You're ruining society," which like. I respect everyone's opinion. It's just they're not paying my bills. <laughs> so. And we, yeah, so you're young still. I'm fairly young. Yeah, I'm 25. 25. So you, you, you've got a long career ahead of you. I do. Do you see doing this for, especially if you start making really good money? Um, I see myself being retired probably in the next five to, yeah, probably yeah, which, five which years. Could, which would never happen if you were... Working yeah. a tech job. If I was working a tech job and just making my six figures and calling it a day, I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to retire. But um, the sky's the limit with this career. It is, and it's it's not. I don't see myself being just like the only fans girl. I think that's another misconception of like, I want to be a personality. I want to be on different podcasts. I, I have a couple podcasts with my friend Jasmine, and then with my social media manager as well. Um, I want to have a bigger presence on social media other than just OnlyFans. So I don't plan to do this forever. That's the way of the world now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how do you find partners? Ooh, this question. Um, I don't right now. I'm such a homebody. I'm sure there's a, a long list of guys that are <laughs> willing and able. There's a lot of guys in my DMs and my messages. A lot of people from my hometown are like, I've actually been in love with you for the last 12 years. I'm like, no, you haven't. Um, but I think, I think every girl has had their, their own experience with dating. But I think for me personally, like, yeah, it has affected my dating life. And I'm okay with that right now because I do want to make the money I want to make. I want to retire. I want to live the life I want to live. And I don't want to change that for a man or just to settle down to say I settled down and make other people happy again, go revert back to that of like doing what's expected of me. Um, do I want to have a family in the future? Absolutely. But right now it's not the time. I don't have time for that. And like I said, like OnlyFans is a full-time job. So I'm working all day, every day on my OnlyFans, on my social media in general. Um, and I don't really have time to like date like that and have I'm a relationship. I'm sure there are going to be comments saying, you know, you'll never meet a guy if you're doing this. But I believe there are guys who <laughs> are turned on by what you're doing. Absolutely. And it doesn't really get in the way. Yeah. So for me personally, like I don't, I don't like to judge anyone on their life decisions. Um, and I think in this whole like red pill community, everyone's like, you won't find a high value man. Well, the irony of it is that I've never had. Uh, what they would call high value man really go out of their way to put hate comments on my stuff because they're probably busy working on their own careers or like excelling in what they're working on. They don't have time to sit here and be like, you're a whore. Like, and in those comments, it's usually like a lot of typos and things like that. So it's just, it's telling. Yes, yeah, co comments who, on social media are just insane. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, everyone has their own opinion and it doesn't bother me, but. But, but you reply to the comments on your OnlyFans. I do, but those aren't like hate comments. No, no, no. I'm sure the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, everyone. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you get some people that like go on and are like say outrageous things just for fun. But it's like you subscribed just to say mean things and then unsubscribe. It's fine. The world is crazy. It's, you still, you paid to say mean things. So. 
but you're, you're, you came with a friend, and I spoke to your friend for a second before you, we started here. Mm-hmm. And she had a really cool attitude about what you're doing. Because, you know, other females are going to give you a hard time for doing this kind of work. And her attitude was, you know, basically you're not hurting anybody. You're, you're, you're surviving. and That's how I view it, too. You're and staying safe. Yeah. And I guess another misconception about OnlyFans is a lot of people do it out of desperation, which for me it wasn't desperation. I was doing it while I was still working a job where I was making six figures. So, um, yeah, it's it's been freeing. I think that's the word I would use to describe well, women, it. Women have this power that they're basically unable to monetize unless they marry a, a rich guy. Mm-hmm. And so now OnlyFans is giving, is giving particularly attractive women an opportunity to make money without any guy's involvement. Yeah, not and, even and, just and like that, attractive that, women either, like all women. All, all kinds of women, yeah. Thank you for correcting me. But that that that's a big threat to a lot of people. It is. And I think the men that would not be able to sustain a lifestyle for a woman like me probably are the only ones that have an issue with it. <laughs> um, the women that tear OnlyFans girls down, I think, are deep down maybe just upset that they're not comfortable doing it or putting themselves out there in that way. I think it's natural for women to be sexual. I've always felt that way. So I don't have an issue with it, clearly. <laughs> um, well, I think the, I think a lot of the world, a lot of, the, a lot of our country is very uptight about sex. Mm-hmm. And they're going to view this as something, you know, you're morally bankrupt and you're taking the world down. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm not certain that's the case. Do you feel like that's a, like a, an American thing versus? Well, I think, I think there's other countries too that feel the same way. But I'm, you know, we're here in the United States, and, and certainly there's a big portion of the country that would frown on what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, but, and then also looking at the number of people that do it, like not that many people do OnlyFans if you really look at the big population. So I feel like people look at it as this like you're ruining society type of thing but it's like if you don't want to be in that world like you don't have to before i started my only fans like i didn't know who any of the only fans creators were I'd well I, I i don't look at it that i think the, the smarter way to look at it is there are so many porn websites that are very popular in the world mm-hmm. on the internet and the, the, those are popular whether you like it or not mm-hmm. and what only fans has done is given the actors in those videos, the opportunity to make and control the money. That's true. So I see it as, as a good thing. Maybe not 100% good, but you know, maybe it's you know, I'm not, safer I'm, I'm, than I'm not, a, I'm not a fan porn. of porn, but but I am a fan of being able to control your money. Mm-hmm. I would so, agree with that. So it's it's a complicated topic, but but I, I, I see that you're safe, you're well taken care of, you're making money, you're happy. Mm-hmm. That that's those are all great things. Whereas doing a working in a career you, you weren't happy with. I'm not sure if that's the, the best way to go through the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do it just because that's what's expected of us. And like, I thought that was normal when I had to make myself into corporate Naomi, you know, I, I've thought, okay, this is what you have to do when you're an adult. This is adulting. And like, now I've really realized I don't have to live by anyone else's terms other than my own. I think it's women like you that are leading the way for the future. Mm-hmm. And many girls will follow, whether we like that or not, mm-hmm. is beside the point because it's it's going to happen anyway. This is this is our society that we've built. I think it's empowering. Absolutely, from my perspective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> w- women have been on the gotten the short end of the stick for centuries. So now you actually have. Like, I don't think guys on OnlyFans can make quite the same money. Or maybe they can't. Only <laughs> maybe a lot of guys do make a lot of money, but it's more people with like big platforms, like rappers and things like that, that have OnlyFans. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I, I'm not really. A... It would be more difficult for men to make as much money as women, but there is. I mean, everybody has their own market. Like some of some people I know that wouldn't be. I, I like the way stereotypical, you're... like attractive, like make crazy money. Like it's really just you have your own niche market. I like the way Jasmine, your friend Jasmine, handles it, where she's very, very educated, very sharp, and mm-hmm. she uses that on her OnlyFans as well, not just 
Yeah, we've uh, attractiveness. we've streamed on Twitch together before. We were talking about like stem cells and moral philosophy, all that crazy <laughs> stuff. Um, but it's cool seeing her fan base is definitely different than than my fan base. But yeah, we're very different and. That's what's kind of been cool. And I told you and thank you. The first thing I said to you was thank you because you brought us together. And now we have our own podcast where we talk about things that, you know, most OnlyFans girls don't talk about together. So it's a whole new world out there. Mm. And there's room for everybody on OnlyFans, it seems. Yeah, there's a lot of room for growth, too. All, all, all different types of content. Not doesn't have to be sexual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not all of my content is sexual. Like, I'll go on there and just be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> People love that. Just hearing you talk and really just like interacting with you on a personal level. I really look at it as like the behind the scenes of my life because like I'll post about coming here, but it won't be like necessarily have to be sexual. Right. They're just like, that's really cool, you know? Excellent. Well, Naomi, thank you so much for telling us about your, your OnlyFans experience and uh, I wish you lots of luck. So what is, what is the name of your OnlyFans account? It is at the Naomi Lynn. T H E N A O M I L Y N N. And that's where guys can find you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. Thank you.